Welcome back to AI Practitioner Exam Bytes. Let's start by reviewing the question from the previous episode, asking about the most appropriate evaluation metrics and criteria. The answer is C, BERT score, productivity metrics, and sales conversion rate. This combination provides the most comprehensive assessment because BERT score is appropriate for evaluating general language generation tasks like product descriptions. It uses contextual embeddings to compare the generated text to reference text, correlating well with human judgment. Productivity metrics address the business objective of efficiency. They can measure how quickly the AI generated descriptions are produced compared to human written ones. And the sales conversion rate is a crucial business metric that is directly tied to revenue. It helps determine if the AI generated descriptions are effectively influencing customer purchasing decisions. Today, we're starting our next domain for guidelines for responsible AI. And we're gonna be covering a heap of exam objectives all under task statement 4.1, explain the development of AI systems that are responsible. Just as a reminder, we're aiming to finish up the series this week. So each episode will be a little longer than usual. So not really bite sized maybe the size of a light meal instead. And that's particularly today the case where we have no less than seven exam objectives to cover. So let's not delay, let's get into it. Starting with the features of responsible AI. Let's break this down into six key pillars. The first being bias ensuring AI systems don't unfairly discriminate against certain groups, fairness, treating all individuals and groups equitably, inclusivity, designing AI systems that work for diverse populations, robustness, building AI that performs consistently across various scenarios, safety, ensuring AI systems don't cause harm to users or society, Veracity, striving for truthfulness and accuracy in AI outputs. These six features are crucial for building ethical and trustworthy AI systems that benefit society as a whole. But how can we achieve these features or goals? Well, there are tools that can help us. AWS offers guardrails for Amazon Bedrock, a powerful tool for implementing responsible AI practices. It allows you to set up content filters to prevent inappropriate outputs, implement input validation to ensure data quality, and configure output scanning to detect sensitive information like personally identifiable information or PII. Now, if we take this a step even further back, Responsible AI starts from the moment you select the model you're going to use. So there are various factors to consider in terms of responsible model selection. When choosing an AI model, consider firstly its environmental impact and sustainability. This involves evaluating the model's energy and consumption during training and inference. Consider the carbon footprint of the data centers used to run the model, opting for more efficient architectures that require less computational power, such as the AWS Inferentia processes for inference and training processes for training balancing model performance with energy efficiency. For example, you might choose a smaller, more efficient model that performs nearly as well as a larger one, but with significantly less environmental impact. There are also legal risks in generative AI, which are important to have awareness about. Intellectual property infringement, ensuring your model doesn't reproduce copyrighted content without permission. Biased outputs, models can perpetuate or amplify societal biases, potentially leading to discrimination claims. Loss of customer trust, inaccurate or harmful outputs can damage your reputation. End user risks, consider potential misuse or over-reliance on AI generated content. And finally, hallucinations, which we've discussed previously. AI models can generate false or misleading information, which could lead to legal issues if acted upon. To mitigate these risks, implement robust testing, monitoring, and governance frameworks for your AI systems. It's also important to consider the data set which is being used to train a model, or most likely more relevant to us, fine tuning an existing foundation model. Consider these four key aspects. Inclusivity, ensure your data represents a wide range of demographics and scenarios. Diversity, include data from various sources and perspectives to avoid narrow representations. 
curated data sources, use high quality verified data to train your models. And finally, balanced data sets, ensure equal representation of different groups and categories. For example, if you're building a facial recognition system, make sure your training data includes a diverse range of ethnicities, ages and genders to avoid biased performance. Now next, we need some way to measure how our AI model is performing. And bias and variance are two critical concepts to understand. Bias refers to the error introduced by approximating a real world problem, which may be complex, using a simplified model. High bias can cause an algorithm to miss relevant relations between features and target outputs, leading to underfitting. Variance, on the other hand, is the error introduced by the model's sensitivity to small fluctuations in the training set. High variance can cause an algorithm to model random noise in the training data rather than the intended outputs leading to overfitting. Now let's use an analogy to better understand these concepts. Imagine you're teaching a child to identify dogs. If you only show the child pictures of German shepherds and say, this is a dog, the child might develop a high bias model. They might think all dogs look exactly like German shepherds. When shown a chihuahua, a poodle, or a cavoodle, they might say, that's not a dog. This model is too simple and fails to capture the diversity of dogs. It's underfitting the concept of a dog. On the other hand, if you show the child thousands of dog pictures, including unusual breeds and also some wolves and foxes, saying this is a dog for all of them, the child might develop a high variance model. They might start identifying any four-legged animal as a dog, including cats or even tables with four legs. This model is too complex and is fitting the to noise in the data. It's overfitting. The ideal scenario is to show the child a diverse range of dog breeds, clearly explaining what makes each one a dog. Four legs, fur, barks, while also showing examples of animals that are not dogs. This helps the child develop a model that can generalize well, identifying most dogs correctly without mistaking other animals for dogs. In machine learning, we aim for this balance. We want our models to be complex enough to capture the important patterns in the data, so low bias, but not so complex that they start fitting to noise, low variance. The reality is that having both low bias and low variance is very, very difficult. You instead need to balance the two and find the sweet spot where the model generalizes well to new unseen data. And this spot will be different for different models. Now getting back to responsible AI, bias and variance in AI models can significantly impact different demographic groups. High bias can lead to systematic errors for underrepresented groups, resulting in unfair treatment or poor performance. High variance can cause inconsistent results across demographics, potentially amplifying rare cases or overfitting to majority groups. So how can we help mitigate these issues? Well, AWS offers several tools to help. First is Amazon SageMaker Clarify. This helps detect bias in your training data and model predictions. We have SageMaker Model Monitor, allowing you to continuously monitor your deployed models for data and model quality issues. And finally, we have Amazon Augmented AI, or A2I. This facilitates human review of low confidence predictions and biased outputs. And in addition, consider these other techniques. Analyzing label quality. Ensure your training data is accurately labeled to prevent bias introduction. Human audits. Regularly have humans review your model's outputs for potential biases or errors. And finally, subgroup analysis. Evaluate your model's performance across different demographic subgroups to identify disparities. And just remember, responsible AI development is an ongoing process. Regularly reassess and update your practices to ensure your AI systems remain fair, transparent, and beneficial to all, which is the ultimate goal of AI. Let's do a review question. 
Which of the following scenarios best demonstrates the concept of high bias, underfitting, in an AI model, particularly as it relates to demographic groups? A. A facial recognition system that accurately identifies people of all ethnicities, but occasionally misclassifies hats as faces. B. A resume screening AI that consistently ranks male candidates higher than equally qualified female candidates for tech jobs. C. A medical diagnosis system that performs well on the majority population but gives inconsistent results for minority groups. Or D. A language translation model that accurately translates common phrases but struggles with idiomatic expressions across all languages. We'll review this in the next episode where we'll finish our coverage of responsible AI development looking at the importance of transparent and explainable models. As always, don't forget to follow, like and subscribe and I'll see you in that next video.